worries. Call the meeting order. Everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> We have uh, things that we had to pay for first. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lame. I think you're number 65. What? No, I didn't. Oh. The New Jersey well, Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Cedar Grove Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be advertised by having the date, time, and place thereof posted on bulletin boards in the district, published and or transmitted to the Verona Cedar Grove Times and Star Ledger newspapers, tap into online news, filed with the township clerk, and posted on the district website. Roll call, please. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Here. Mr. Valero. <coughs> Mr. Mandela. Here. Mrs. Dye. Here. The meeting is open to the public for comments on items on the agenda. Seeing none, good evening, everyone. Good, good evening. evening. How's it going? Good. I don't know, much better than you on that end. Well, <laughs> have some I think we got issues up here, Joe. <laughs> Just Microf saying. Microphone issues. It's all good. Yes. I can be heard, right? It, I don't need the little fuzzy thing. Okay. Okay. That's great. <laughs> Committee report. But she's winded, so oh, we need that. Yeah. <laughs> That's any committee reports? Yes, I have Go two. Go right ahead. Um, the first just two? Just two. I could do a couple extra. I can be very You guys are lucky. Short <laughs> meeting tonight. Let's go. Uh, the first thing is I just wanted to congratulate everyone at the high school. Um, they just recently completed the drama production of Drop Dead. It was a, a British farce. Some of the folks are in the uh, audience tonight. It was really a uh, fun play and uh, had the privilege of watching it twice. And the great thing about it was that as it unfolded, you thought it was going to be one thing, and then it turns out that it's entirely something different. So it was actually uh, a really well done production. So I was very, uh, very impressed with that. The second thing was I attended the uh, South End uh, FSA, and they had their big, um, one of their big charity events, the Wizards, in, at the high school. And I'm happy to report that they made $3,812 off of the event they netted and off the concession stand they sold food up there as well they made 425 dollars so it was very very nice. successful nice. for them they're nice. really they're really thrilled um south end's big fundraiser if you want to mark the date for the board is on june 10th they're doing a casino night june 10th is a casino night at the brownstone that's going to be their major fundraiser it's their turn this year and uh, other than that, it's just uh, typical things at the South End. They're doing, they need some more volunteers for a hot lunch. They need some more volunteers for ice cream Wednesdays. And uh, they've started their pre-K Saturdays where they have all the pre-K kids come in that are gonna be coming into the school, uh, um, showing them what everything is like. So I'm gonna keep it short just because of Mr. Mandel. Me? No. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, no, I mean, that's it. not a comment so it was, it was about being winded. You don't want to be accused of being winded. Apparently. Winded, right? <laughs> yes. So, but other than that, it was it was it was a it was a good meeting. Very nice. Anyone else? We do. At what point do we bring? I guess during committee meetings. Great. All right. We have our representative from the high school here this evening. Hello. Hi. So. Make <laughs> <laughs> a laugh. She has a fan club. Wow. So there's Can we bring her more often? <laughs> I mean, we have audience. As if she wasn't nervous enough. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's not that many updates at the high school, but tomorrow we're going to have a full formal. It's Mardi Gras themed. It's going to be from 7 to 9.30. All grades are welcome. And it's just going to be a fun night. Um, yeah, that's for that. Um, on Friday, we're for the National Honor Society, they're sponsoring the veterans, so everyone's gonna wear red, white, and blue and to help the wounded warriors. And then at the end of the month, on November 30th, we're gonna have an eighth grade orientation, and we're going to gather like the upcoming um, high schoolers, like the freshmen, the eighth graders now, and their parents to come to the auditorium. We're gonna give them a speech. I'm gonna introduce them and give them a taste of the high school. And then um, I 
it gets the it gets the peer leaders. So they're gonna tour them around and show them all the classes and the clubs and a lot of the club representatives are gonna be there and show them what the high school's like. And that's really great. That's great. Pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll see you there, right, Jack? Yeah. What? <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. Awesome. Okay. Uh, board presentations this evening. A lot of trips planned, so we're just going to go <coughs> over how it is on the agenda. The first one is the trip proposal to Italy, and Ms. Durso will be giving us that presentation. And I imagine that's why a lot of you are here this evening. <laughs> So I am proposing a trip to Italy for the Italian three and four students uh, for this spring break, spring break 2018. We would be going to Venice, Florence, and Rome. So just a little bit of the important details. We'd be using Education First Tour Company. That is the same tour company that the Globetrotters use. So we have experience with the school in using this uh, tour company. It's also come highly recommended to me from other teachers and other schools that have used this tour company. They're very reputable, great place. Um, again, we'd be trying to go for spring break 2018, which would be March 30th to April 6th. So we'd be going Friday to Friday. Um, it'd be eight days with six full days in Italy. So the first day of the trip starts with when we depart from New York. We'd fly from New York to Milan, and then at the conclusion of the trip, we'd fly from Rome back to New York. Um, so just uh, about the price, it's going to cost $3,340 per student, and that's a consolidated price, which means that we would probably be sharing our bus with another school. Um, it just is a way to cut down on costs. If you want to do it privately, it would be about $3,700. And the only thing you're doing here is sharing a bus, basically, and going on tours with other students. I, don't, I think that's fine. Why not? Um, uh, but that price does include your round-trip airfare as well as your three separate hotels, since we're staying in three separate cities, three separate hotels. It includes two meals per day. It's your breakfast and dinner. Lunch would be on the kids, but it could be like a couple euro for a piece of pizza, so not a really big expense for lunch. Um, your ground transportation through cities, so, and the local guide that says their full-time tour director, they would pick us up from the airport in Milan and stay with us through the drop-off at the airport in Rome. So we do have somebody with us to kind of help with the logistics. Those local tour guides, um, so when we go into each city and we take tours of different sites, you're given an actual local guide who can kind of provide even more insight and more of an authentic and cultural experience because they're from the area. It includes all your entry fees to your attractions. So for example, we'll be going to the Vatican. It will include, it already includes the price of the ticket to get in. If you want to go to the Coliseum, it includes that price. So realistically, what's coming out of pocket of the students once we're there is, like I said, maybe lunch or whatever they personally would like to purchase or buy, maybe a gelato. I would recommend it, okay, but whatever they'd want. And also, it includes a 24-hour emergency service, which is detailed in the itinerary, which I passed out. So it's just if a parent needed to contact us on tour, there is somebody who they can reach at all times. And then as far as payment is concerned, you need a $95 deposit by December 1st, and that secures your spot in the trip. And then they offer a couple payment plans. You can set up an automatic payment. We'll take money out of your account bi -monthly, uh, twice monthly or once monthly. You would set that up. You could pay manually, which would be just creating your own timeline, and you could pay up until we would leave on the trip. And also, there's online fundraising. I know we're trying to go quicker than we typically would be. So the tour company will offer each student a uh, a link that they can send out to like family members and friends and they can donate right to their uh, page to kind of cut down on their own personal costs. Um, and then just a little overview of what we'd be doing. Our first stop would be to Venice. So some of the things that we'd get to see are the Grand Canal, uh, Piazza San Marco, the Doji's Palace, Ponte di Alto, and of course, gotta go on a gondola when we're in Venice, right? Get that real experience there. Uh, then we're going to uh, Florence. So we'd go to Piazza uh, della Signoria, which is where the Duomo is, one of the ultimate stops there, we'd see the Academia and go see the David, the Ponte Vecchio, the Uffizi, and I also put into our tour a half day trip to Pisa, so the students would also get the opportunity to go and see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So just packing in even more for the kids. And then our last stop, of course, is Rome, and perhaps the best of all. My, uh, I used to live there, so it is one of my places that I specialize in. So the first thing we would see really is the Vatican. It's quite an experience. It also is technically going to a separate country, so it's like two countries in a week, right? It's pretty great. 
Um, you'd also see the Colosseum, Roman Forum, Trevi Fountain, Spanish Steps. I mean, in Rome, the sites are endless. Um, and then lastly, of course, um, I'm ideally taking 24 students um, from Italian three and four. And right now I have 24 students who have more or less committed to me that they would be ready to go. They t I gave them all the basic information, just kind of price and dates. They went home, talked to their parents, came back to me saying, you know, they said yes, so we're on the right track as far as numbers are concerned. Um, and we would have um, three chaperones. Uh, Mr. Gallagher has signed on to be a chaperone already if this works out, myself and Miss Riley, um, who teaches English. However, she teaches all the seniors. So since most of our trip is seniors, it's more than half seniors, it's great because she knows all the students already. And then the only thing is enrollment would have to start uh, being open by the 15th because we are pushing for this spring break. We are on a shorter timeline. So the tour company would need everybody's um, like passport and information like that by the 1st once they set the deposit to make sure there's no glitches in terms of getting everybody their airfare. But that, that, is, that is my proposal. <laughs> is anybody going? <laughs> <laughs> So if, if you don't get 24, how does I that work? There, if you don't, I mean, I feel like we you will. have 24, um, but no matter what, the three chaperones that we have, we would just need 18 kids in order for those three chaperones to be able to go. And once they put the deposit in, no matter what, if we get to 24, their price stays the same. Okay. So, but I feel like. How many would you need for a private bus, just out of curiosity? Um, it, same, it's how much a bus holds. Okay. So if a bus holds like 50, 50. kids, you need like yeah. 50 kids, and yeah. that's just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And you're flying out of New York City? Yes. Yeah. So as far as airfare is concerned, um, they would let us know about three months prior to departure, um, which airport and airline we are flying from. They did tell me they only fly off of major airlines. So we would be on like, maybe like United or Delta or Alitalia is his airline. Um, but we are flying into Milan and out of Rome. So whichever would be most cost effective. And they said up to one stop is a possibility. And, and how do the um, kids get to the airport? Is it by themselves? I mean, because we'd be leaving Friday, we don't have school Friday, because okay. that would be good Friday. So, I mean, that's something that I would dis discuss. I'm not exactly sure in that moment, but either they'd all meet us in one location, and like right in the beginning, and then we'd all kind of check in together, or we could all meet from each school and go from there. Okay. That is something that I would figure out as we got to that point. That's, that's it. That's sounds great. Fu sounds like fun. Absolutely. It's a great trip. I it's did an awesome trip. A couple trip. Of years ago, exactly that, and it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I've been to all these places already. Um, it would be really exciting to be able to take the kids there. And so you guys, when you go to the Vatican, will have your own private tour. Yes. Yeah. So you go right to the front of the line and go right yes, in and which everything. Is great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I've done it always, and sitting on that line, and it's yeah. terrible. It's awesome. So it would be yes, kind of expressly right in. It'd be great. And you've you've lived there, so it's <laughs> it's a totally different feel when you already know it. Yes, exactly. So I feel like even for that, I can kind of take the kids on more. You know. What they might not see had they just gone on a regular trip there. Awesome. Very nice. Thank That's you. great. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Ambitious doing this so soon. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Another applause. So I figured what we do is we're going to hear the next trip proposal to D.C. with Mr. Kanopka, and then we'll just take a quick break after that, and then whoever needs to go and do their school things and, you know, their and school lose tomorrow. our audience? I know. I know. You're excited to actually see people, but, you know. <laughs> so just kind of bear with no us. No offense to you guys, but I'm stuck with you no matter what. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. No. Oh, I have to be here. I'm going on both these trips. Is anyone okay, actually well, here for the D.C. trip? No. One. One. Yeah, but they don't take the... We'll, we'll let, let him talk. Yeah, we'll let him talk. Unless you're for involved, you need to do it. All right, so I'm here to talk uh, about Washington, D.C., our seventh uh, consecutive annual trip uh, consisting of our AP United States history, AP... Um, GOPO, which is American Government and Politics, as well as the AP Economics courses. Um, roughly in those classes, um, right now, we don't, I don't have a total finalized number of students yet, but uh, I'm supposed to know that by tomorrow. We're looking at um, estimated, uh, it's gonna be right around 30 students, which is in line with what we've had over the past several years. Um, 
chaperones uh, staying consistent here is myself, Mr. Gallagher, and Ms. Sh Mrs. Showmaker. Um, like I said, it's our seventh executive year. We've developed a good like working relationship. Um, given that uh, there's a whole lot to see in Washington, D.C., it's good to have multiple chaperones to take students on like different points of interest that they might have um, while we're there. So the dates, uh, we're looking at Friday, May 18th through Tuesday, May 22nd. Um, the way the AP exam schedule works, the um, AP uh, economics, they actually have an exam on that Friday morning, which is pretty much usually how it always falls. Um, so our form of transportation to Washington, we've consistently stayed with Amtrak, which has served us well over the past several years. Um, and the way that would work is me and Mrs. Showmaker would take uh, my AP United States History as well as my AP Government and Politics on an early train down to Washington. Then once the economics exam is completed, which is, is a morning exam, uh, Mr. Gallagher would meet up with those students um, at Newark uh, Penn Station and they would go down uh, via Amtrak that way. Um, so transportation, once we get there, uh, it, it's pretty convenient the way it's set up. We're going with the same hotel we've used in the past. Um, we take the Amtrak to Union Station in Washington, which then is a short metro ride uh, a few blocks to Le Enfant Plaza, which takes us about one block away from the Holiday Inn Capitol, uh, which is, you know, if we got our baggage, it's convenient to be close to the ultimate uh, end location there. Um, the estimated cost, and, and this is subject to slight variation depending on the final total for uh, male and female students when it comes to the hotel room alignments, um, but for the most part, that's consistent what the cost has been over the past several years. Uh, hotel, roughly 365 Amtrak, $100 round trip, uh, and a metro ticket to get you from Union Station to the hotel. Um, that's all to be covered um, by students and chaperones. Um, yeah, and it doesn't include like the meals. That's uh, oftentimes we're on the fly. Different groups are going to different places, um, seeing different points of interest, and they stop for their own lunches. Uh, usually we have... Uh, we try to do group dinners at nighttime, but it, uh, oftentimes it's hard to get like a, a sit down at a restaurant on a Friday night with like 30 students. Uh, so then, even then, we go to like different points of uh, food interests, uh, and one of the chaperones is usually uh, accompanying all of that also. So where is this hotel? Why we stay there? Uh, it's very close to the to the National Mall there, which is walking distance to just about all of the sights to see in in Washington D.C. There. That um, saves on the overall cost of the trip if, if we don't have to like take the train or a bus uh, to and fro, like every single location there. Uh, we do do a lot of walking. Um, occasionally we, we allow them to take the metro and we're going to Arlington National Cemetery, which is kind of a hike. Uh, but for the most part, we stay on foot uh, for the entire time. The agenda typically, um, what we've done in the past, as uh, so we have certain fixed items, like I said, uh, there's a whole lot to do and see in Washington, D.C. Uh, we've been there six years in a row, and I still don't think I've seen everything, uh, although I try to find something new every single time I go there. Uh, but generally, we go to see the White House, um, and, and that's a tour of the White House. It's dependent on like, whether or not we can get in or not, uh, which you have to apply for usually six months in advance. Uh, so we're working on that right now. Um, Congressman Fra Frayling Heisen has been great to us in the past. Every single year, uh, we're in his office, and his family has a, a long history uh, of politicians in Washington, D.C. There's great artifacts he's got hanging on his wall. Um, and oftentimes, if, he, if he's readily available when we're there, he more than welcome, like, come on in, and they'll talk to us for a little while. And if he's not available, his staff has been very good in the past, um, giving a little talk about uh, the congressman and his history. Um, and also showing us around the Capitol. Um, Senator Booker, once he became like a vice presidential candidate, kind of stopped returning our phone calls. <laughs> uh, but uh, last year, uh, Senator Menendez was, uh, he came up pretty clutch getting us uh, tickets into the Senate gallery uh, when Booker wasn't available. Uh, Arlington National Cemetery, that's one of the, uh, I don't know, the big highlights of Washington, D.C., which I look forward to and I never get tired of seeing when I'm there. Um, uh, that includes like the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the changing of the guard. If, if no one's seen that before in their life, it's something I think uh, definitely worthwhile seeing. Um, of course, all the monuments, memorials, um, the National Archives, Library of Congress, and then there's like a million different museums, which of course is like student interest. One chaperone will take one group where they want to go, uh, and the others will take uh, in a different direction. So I've, I've thrown in a couple uh, of the highlights and some pictures from the past. Um, 
like the World War II Memorial and all the war memorials, we, we learn about it in the classroom. Uh, and I think a lot of time young kids in, in the high school level, even at the high school level, um, it definitely before high school, uh, it's something they talk about and they learn about in the past. But then you go there and you see this and you go like the Vietnam Memorial and you read the names on the wall and it's, and it's kind of uh, making it a little bit more personal. Um, oftentimes when you're at these memorials, you, you'll run into veterans uh, some even World War II uh, who were there are still around. Um, every, every time we go there, I feel like we, we run into uh, the honor flights, um, which is uh, veterans uh, typically uh, of World War II um, uh, who are terminally ill. And they've got this whole uh, charity program to actually like, send them to Washington, D.C. free of charge. Um, and they go there and they can like, see these memorials that were erected in their honor for what they did. Um, and it's something to experience every time I'm there, just looking at it during the nighttime, staring into the, uh, I don't know, the fat one's there, it's still pretty cool, and I, again, it's something I look forward to every single year, even if this is my seventh year in a row, uh, it doesn't tire on me. Uh, the Marine Corps <coughs> War Memorial, the Iwo Jima Memorial, um, another, uh, I don't know, great statue, great to see at night. The Vietnam Wall, um, and again, like just the names, the extensive list of names, and they go by year, and it's, it, it, I don't know, it gets me every time I look at it. And again, I've seen it so many times now, but uh, I still remember the first time I was in Washington, uh, which was, I was actually an eighth grader, and my school principal at that point in time was a Vietnam War veteran, uh, and I still remember him like pulling me and like a couple of kids aside, and like, I knew that guy, I knew that guy, and that's, that's powerful. Uh, Again, it's one thing to talk about in the classroom, uh, to read it in the books, um, but to go there and maybe like run into somebody who was there, a part of it, uh, it makes it that much, I don't know, as far as a learning experience. Uh, another thing gets me every time. Uh, the Arlington National Cemetery, this is the Eternal Flame, uh, John F. Kennedy, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, Rain or Shine, those guys are out there. Uh, Again, in all the weather elements, and if you haven't seen that done, it's pretty incredible, those guys, how robotic they are uh, in, in their service. Inside the White House, again, it's, it's kind of tough, and it's dependent on what else is going on, where the groups are trying to get a tour in the White House. But we've been in there a few years in a row now. Uh, I think the bottom right corner there is me smiling <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a little child because they actually like let out like the first dogs, <laughs> and I got to pet them. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but again, like you're standing in the White House, the history uh, that's been there, the people of like those, those are the chairs that like very important people have sat in, uh, and it's kind of cool to be uh, in that position. U.S. Capitol, uh, top right there, that's actually Congressman Frelinghuysen's office, and you can see some of the artifacts on the wall. Uh, that's one of his staffers who was like giving a, uh, I don't know, talk about all the things that are on the wall, answering questions for the kids. They're really great with that. Uh, from time to time, it's under uh, construction. That's what the scaffolding is on the bottom left there. Uh, I think when they had the earthquake a few years back, it kind of uh, messed it up. But Supreme Court, another point of interest, uh, was a political hot topic in the last election. Uh, you can go inside, and there's usually uh, a lecture uh, every day that the court is not actually in session because you can actually sit in the, the chamber where like the Supreme Court is, and they'll talk about what's going on in the court. And then they'll open up to questions like, what's going on? Uh, it can be like even personal questions. Like I saw this Supreme Court justice kind of does this and they'll give you like personal insight about what's going on because for the most part, um, you can't get in there and, and see all the cases. I mean, who does? Uh, but it's pretty cool to be able to do that. Uh, the Washington Monument, that's pretty cool to go up to the top and, and kind of see uh, from the bird's eye view there. Unfortunately, that's closed, I think, till like next spring though because they're, they're fixing the elevator. Uh, but we've done that in the past. Lincoln Memorial, famous, uh, a lot of famous stuff going there. Like the I had a dream speech of Martin Luther King. There's an actual block on the steps there. You can like stand where Martin Luther King gave his speech. Uh, and again, connecting the history and, and being right there and looking out to, and imagining what it would be like to be there. It's pretty cool. Jefferson Memorial. Uh, the night tour, it's become, uh, <laughs> Yeah, a, pop, a popular um, itinerary item of the trip. Uh, I take the kids uh, on, on a walk at night when all the tourists are, for the most part, gone and gone to sleep. And it's another thing to see it at nighttime. Uh, I think I like it more at night, actually. Um, like the reflecting pool and, and all the lights, it's pretty cool. 
Um, boy will walk a lot and they get really tired and they have to get up the next morning and they're grumpy, but they're glad they did it in the end. And they come back and tell me a few years down the road that it was like one of the best things they ever done in high school. Uh, one year we got to see the, the Silent Drill platoon, uh, which are pretty incredible. Those guys, you want to talk about robots, flipping the, the guns around and marching on, on point like you can't tell a difference. They're, they're all it's like synchronized. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Great. Yes. I don't have any questions because we okay it every year and it's the same cool trip every year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it for the audience on, on my own. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Everyone at home. No, I think this is great. I think it's a yeah. great experience for, uh, for the kids to, to get to go and do this and see everything that they get to see. And I think an amazing yeah, place. that firsthand, you know, actually standing where something actually went on, it's just, you know, and looking at the names, yeah, right. that's intense. Yeah, I know, it's pretty amazing. Thank you, thank you for thank taking you. the memory. Well, yeah. I yep. totally appreciate it. So we're going to take just like a two-second break, more for so you, unfair. not for us. Um, so you can go if you want to go, and it's okay to go, and we, we really think you're going to go. Or you so could okay. stay. Um, <laughs> and what we're also going to do is, um, since the Italy trip needs to be approved before November or by November 15th, and our meeting isn't until November 21st, mm. if it's okay with everybody, we'll put it on the agenda today, and we'll go ahead and approve it so the process can kind of get started. Good. You, we, we do, do that before that. they leave or after they leave? No, oh, after, during. Yeah, you okay. can go. Trust me. Okay. We're going to do it. It's going to be fine. Got and it. So. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so well, two second break. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice job. You guys were fabulous in this show. Fabulous, fabulous. Two, one. Yes. Bye-bye. Yes. Is that going to make a difference? <laughs> nice job, Coach. We'll see you here for support. See you. Five times? Absolutely. Good night. Good job, Coach. Nice job. Good job. All good. Off you go. Definitely. Round them up. There you go. At this point, it's up to, you know. <laughs> Together and get your, get your roster of kids. And you're welcome. Wow, how did you get pushed Enjoy. aside? You do. Good <laughs> night. <laughs> 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 he does abuse you. How come? Five minutes. Ready, set, go. Do oh, really? no, no. Do it. Do Five it. minutes? Do it. No. I don't think it's possible. Yes, it Anything's okay. possible. So, Mr. DeVita, you're going to add this Italy trip somewhere, right? Yeah, what would that fall on there just so I know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be personnel, wouldn't it? No. I don't think so. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be, be under? Business. Wouldn't it be under uh, well, S? Just tell us. We don't have to guess. We have to do personnel now. We approve everything else on the personnel. S16. So like an S18. 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 Okay, and that would is that a new? S18 is first to other. Well, wait a minute. Motion to approve. First reading. First reading. Because we need to make it official and have the board okay it before they go ahead and open it and let the kids like register for it. Even if they say they're gonna. I think it's just better that we. Because otherwise we're not back here to the twenty first, right? Then, right, exactly. And then it's Thanksgiving and, and then, um, Christmas. And so. What are the dates again? 
Motion to approve upon first reading the trip to Italy during spring break. I'm just here for the mm -hmm. 10 o'clock show. Right. Really? 10 o'clock. <laughs> we are not. The marbles are not my fault, to yeah. Approve on first reading the Cedar Grove High School International for a proposal to Venice, Florence, and Rome on March 30th. Oh my gosh. Which proposal? Yep. Hey, geez, why don't Sorry, we just have Mr. Venice. Featherman read some policies too Sorry, while we're at it? Venice, Florence, and Rome. Rome. Just read it off of his paper. We got it. And S. Yes. We just used up your minutes. Oh, yeah. So that was S18. S19 will be the policy readings? Go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> the Office of the Business Administrator and Board Secretary can have a motion for uh, under minutes B1 through B3. So moved. Second. B1 is a motion to approve the public and executive minutes of October 17, 2017. B2 is a motion to approve the budgetary transfers for the month of October. And B3 is a motion to approve the board secretary certification to the Cedar Grove Board of Education. Any discussion? Nope. No. Roll call, please. Mr. Pervulovic. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under business, can I have a motion for B4 through B7? So moved. Second. B4 is a motion to approve the location agreement with New York University to School of Arts and the Cedar Grove Board of Education. B5 is a motion to approve joining the National Cooperative Cooperative Purchasing Alliance. B6 is a motion to approve joining the interlocal purchasing system. And B7 is a motion to accept a donation from Investors Bank in the amount of $500. Any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Pervulovic. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under personnel, can I have a motion for S1 through S15? So moved. Second. S1 is a motion to affirm the superintendent's report on harassment, intimidation, and bullying from November 7, 2017. S2 is a motion to approve the submission of the 2017-18 Statement of Assurance to the New Jersey Department of Education as per the New Jersey Quality Single Accountability Continuum, or NJQSAC. S3 is a motion to approve the resignation of Amy Sirocco, high school Spanish teacher, effective December 15, 2017. S4 is a motion to approve the affiliation agreement between the Cedar Grove District and Caldwell University regarding liability insurance. S5 is a motion to approve Jackie Van Natten for morning and after school supplemental instruction. S6 is a motion to retroactively ap approve Susan Casal, Cedar Grove Memorial Middle School math teacher maternity leave replacement. S7 is a motion to appoint the following staff in accordance with the state emergent hiring procedures. S8 is a motion to retroactively approve Katie Hanlon, athletic trainer, to teach CPR at the rate listed. S9 is a motion to re reimburse, reimburse sorry, the following school-based volunteers for fingerprinting expenses. S10 is a motion to approve the following as school volunteers. S11 is a motion to approve the following substitute teachers for the 17-18 school year at the rate listed. <coughs> S12 is a motion to approve the following stipends for coaching positions. S13 is a motion to approve Brian Dorfflower as a volunteer assistant coach for the boys basketball for the 17-18 school year. S14 is a motion to authorize attendance at the following events. S15 is a motion to approve the following students for classroom observation. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under curriculum, can I have a motion for S16? Uh, so moved. Second. S S16 is a motion to approve the following staff members for curriculum writing during the 17-18 school year. <coughs> Any discussion? Roll yeah. call, please. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under contracts, can I have a motion for S17? And then S18 is just going to be under a different heading? Yeah. Okay. S17. So moved. Second. S17 is a motion to approve the following contracts for special education students as recommended by the Director of Special Services for the 17-18 school year. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Provulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under other, <laughs> a motion for S18. So moved. Second. S18 
is a motion to approve upon first reading the Cedar Grove Inter International Trip proposal to Venice, Florence, and Rome um, from March 20th, 2018 to April 6th, 2018. March 30th. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. March 30th. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they're not going for that long a period of time. Uh, any discussion? No, ma'am. Roll call, please. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Ja, how we do? The meeting is open to the public for comments on items on or off the agenda. Seeing none, announcement of future meetings, November 21st, here, 8 p.m., December 5th, here, 8 p.m. I'm not going to bother saying anything else because everybody wants to get out of here, with the exception of most of us attended the New Jersey School Board's um, Association workshop. Right. I guess it was almost two weeks ago in Atlantic City. It was the first time we had gone, and I thought it was a great learning experience. They had uh, a lot of great workshops, and I think we came back with some great ideas, and it was also nice meeting people from other districts as well. And so realizing how forward. functional we actually are? Right. <laughs> exactly. We did a pretty good job. I, I think actually all four of us, we did over 30 workshops, if you counted everyone what they were doing. Over thirty, over thirty workshops. It right, was, it was really great. No, it was really great. I mean, and in some cases, we like you know divided and conquered just because there were so many interesting topics that you know we want to make sure at least one person got to go to each one. So I thought it was great. Uh, I really. It's an awesome experience. Definitely something for the future. Yeah, definitely. I look forward to. Sorry, Mr. Federman. I mean, I know we're inviting ourselves this time, but. Yes. It was. Anything? It was. It was okay. a very good thing. Anything else? No. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, sorry, I just <laughs> just want to roll call, please. Mr. Pravulovich. <laughs> yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Meeting's over. <laughs> Good evening.